told you last week that we were giving you seven, uh, seven decisions, sorry, seven decisions to do great things in your life. And last week he told you to decide to receive the word, decide to receive the word. Today, uh, my assignment is to, to help us to know the decision to decide to be transformed. Somebody say decide to be transformed. The scripture reads from Romans 12, 1 and 2, we've all probably heard this uh, somewhere in passing. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all of all he has done for you, uh, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. That is truly the way to worship him. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you, somebody say transform you, into a new person by changing the way you think. Somebody say think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Decide to be transformed, Father God, right now as we move into this moment, God. We just give it to you, God. We say we want to hear from you, God. I'm asking that you would um, allow your word to be just, just as practical as it can be, God, that it would just get so deep inside of us. It would get so deep inside of our soul that we won't be able to have no choice but to be transformed today. God, that we won't have no choice but to be able to accept what you've got to say to us. God, that we'll hear it, we'll hear it clearly and that we will decide to make a decision for you that will actually last. God, that we won't just do what we always do, hear what we always hear, and then go and go back to the same way. But God, my prayer right now is God that you would move me out the way, God. You move the ironing board out the way, God. Move, illustrate, move it all out the way. And God, allow us to hear from you, receive what you have to say and act on it. Oh God, right there. Allow us to act on the word and decide to be transformed. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Shout out to you guys. I love Grace Community. I love my church. I love you, Elder Poole. <laughs> he said he loves me too. Praise the Lord. Y'all not going to tell me y'all love me back? All right. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you. I'm talking. We're having a conversation here. Like, talk, talk back to me. All right. I love you guys. But I, I got some issues with some of y'all this, this, uh, this afternoon, Crystal. I, I feel like you ain't seen me before because I feel like, Crystal, if you had a saw me before I got up here, girl, I feel like you might have possibly would have said something to me. Like, you might have had an issue with my outfit, Crystal. I feel like maybe you would have been the one that would have got me together because I saw a lot of people uh, 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 this morning and this afternoon and uh, they didn't say anything about my outfit. All right, somebody said I look all right. I look good, somebody said I look good. To be honest, listen, uh, can, I need y'all, maybe if we do a team effort, uh, I just want to go ahead and shout out that I was matching the praise team, but I did not, we didn't coordinate that and I didn't do it on purpose. You see how it keeps happening? That's because you need to let me in the praise team. All right, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They won't let me sing. They won't let me sing. Listen, so I have some issues with y'all because nobody kind of checked me on my outfit. I had one person that said she was going to run over to um, and ask me if she was okay if, I, if she ran over to Dollar General and saw if they had an iron on the shelf because for some reason I was, she said, I don't know, I thought you forgot, you look like you forgot to iron your shirt. Oh, and I got 
I got an issue, Elder Poole, because you didn't pull me aside and say, listen, Pastor. <laughs> I love it, Pastor. Uh, I love it. I love it. Elder Poole said, he said, I didn't know how. He said, I didn't know how. But you, but you saw that I was wrinkled. Let me tell you, I got to apologize. Listen, we have some visitors. Listen, you're family now, okay? If you know, once you come in and I know your name, it's just... You're, it's, you're just up for getting put into the sermon, all right? Sorry, Monique. I'm sorry. I know you knew. I know this is your first time. But listen, so Monique and her dad are here from New York, and uh, they came to meet me, and I felt, yes, let's have it up, let's have it up, let's have it up, let's have it up, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all be seeing more of her later. I felt so bad. I just got to I felt so bad when it came in this morning, and I had to go meet them. They said, this is the pastor. I said, oh, my. They must be looking at me like, oh, they don't iron at this church. They must. I said, he's going to be like, he said, yes, yeah, you saw me. You saw me. I said, I saw you sizing me up. He said, oh, I don't know if I want my daughter coming in here. They don't even. Okay, okay, you can dress down, but y'all taking it a little bit too far. Now y'all want to dress down, and you don't want to ring iron your clothes, and you want to come in here. Here, wrinkle, Regina. You want to have a hat on, and you can't wrinkle your like iron your shirt. Uh oh. Whew. All right, just had to get that out because I've been struggling to hold on to that because I felt so bad about the fact that I was wrinkled. So now, now that you know <laughs> that I was wrinkled on purpose, now I feel better. But a lot of times, many of us are walking around with a wrinkled mindset, with a messed up mindset. And people see it, and people know, and people oftentimes don't know how to say something to you, and so they just let you walk around as wrinkled as can be, a whole hot mess, and many of us if you be honest, a lot of us in here, we don't like the iron. I don't know if y'all want to be honest. Now, I know y'all not walking around this wrinkle, but a lot of us don't like to iron. And so sometimes we'll know that the shirt might be wrinkled. Shake it out a little bit. <laughs> and throw that shirt on and run out the door. Because we get to a place where we are okay with just going with the flow and okay with that mindset. We become comfortable with it. Um, to be honest, this is kind of a, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people literally don't even really iron anymore. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, okay, so, okay, okay. We got some ironing people in here, but we got a whole lot of people in here who do not iron. <laughs> and oftentimes we'll find different ways we'll find different ways in order to make sure our clothes are you know not completely looking this bad but today I want you to say decide to be transformed okay now that you got me let's try it again decide to be transformed um, when we think about being transformed and we think about the renewing of our minds, a lot of our minds are literally just messed up. A lot of our mindsets are messed up. I started at the beginning and saying that, you know, I've been going through some things and talking about, like, no weapon formed against me. Um, it's so funny. I was having this conversation with Aaron uh, yesterday. Shout out to my trainer. God, get called a hey. <laughs> I, I love him. He's training me in physical fitness, but a lot of that really ends up being a lot of mind stuff stuff. If y'all know, like your physical and your mind is connected. Uh, we probably will get back to that eventually. But we were talking, and I realized that like a few months ago, God told me that he was about to do something in my life. He told me where he was going to take me. He showed it to me. I saw it. I saw the vision for it, Elder Cox. And I, I, I've been trying to get there. And it's kind of like I see where it is, and I see where I'm at. And I'm like trying to get there, but it's like I'm struggling to get there. And it's like it's not fear that's holding me back. I'm like, I'm not scared no more. Like, I know where I'm going, but I'm struggling to get to where he's trying to take me. And I'm like, what is, what is in between here? Like, what's going on? And I realized that a few months ago, when God told me that, he told me, because of where I'm taking you, you got to make sure that your mindset is right, because the devil sees where I'm taking you to, and he's going to try and get in there, and he's going to try to add the pressure, and he's going to try to add uh, uh, some, some uh, 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 obstacles in the way in order to hold you back. 
And so what I realize is what I'm feeling right now is the pressure of God pushing me into great things or grace things, and there's a pressure that comes with it, and I got to make sure that my mind is right, and I have to allow my mindset to be transformed to make sure I can handle where God is taking me. And I'm telling you all this because I know that God wants you to do grace things. And as we're all on our journey to do grace things, great things, grace things, there are some steps that come in between there. And so there's a few things that I want to do today. I want to give you um, seven things to help you iron out your mindset. Because the thing is, our mindsets are a little off. I realized that I was like, I was spiraling. Anybody else spiral? (laughs) I don't know. Y'all don't want to be real. It's okay. I realized, I said, oh, Regina, you're spiraling. I can always tell. I can tell. I was like, okay, it's spiraling. You get one thought, and then it just goes. Uh, Before you know it, you're all the way down here. It's like, how did I get here? Because you let yourself spiral, 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 spiral. And so we got to figure out. How to get into the, I want to hop in the, I want to hop into your spiral, if you'll let me. <laughs> if you'll let me hop into your spiral motion. Let me hop in there and help you to change your mindset because a lot of it is our, of changing our mindset and renewing our mindset. All right, cool. We with it? Y'all with it? Yeah. All right, so we're not going to be too long. <clears throat> I don't even know why I say that. We're going to be up here until God's done, okay? Uh, so I got seven things, <laughs> seven things to iron out your mindset. The first thing you got to do is abandon the wrinkles. All right. Like I said from before, (laughs) a lot of us uh, literally, and I'm not even talking about y'all. Y'all just go go with me. We're in a society today where, like, it's like, we really, people do not iron, and it's just like, okay, like, I'm good. I'm just going to throw this on. It's not too wrinkled. It's not, it's not too, it's it's, it's somewhere in between. If it's somewhere in between, I can get away with it. I'm throwing it on. You got to get to a place where you make a decision that you're going to do something. I don't know if anybody else can agree that you make decisions, but sometimes we make, like, maybe decisions. Like, I'm going to do this, but I'm kind of, kind of going, I'm kind of going to do this, but I'm, eh, like, right, Chasmin. Like, it's like, ah, like, maybe I will do this. But I believe that when we make a real decision and we decide to do something, then we most times actually follow through. Yeah? But a lot of times we don't follow through because we haven't actually made a real decision. I believe we operate in maybe mode. Yeah, we operate in maybe like, we operate in maybe mode, but when you operate in maybe mode, it's a setup for maybe transformation. Like we operate in, (laughs) y'all not, (laughs) we operate in maybe mode. I need y'all to get here with me because somebody, this is the only point that you even need. Like you're operating in maybe mode and you maybe might come today, you maybe might show up tomorrow, maybe. you maybe gonna do it, and then what happens is you maybe might transform. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm a out myself. Look, we just, this is, I guess, I think it's the pool, it just, it makes you talk about yourself. It just, yeah. it just makes you pull, I'm out myself out of pool. Um, and I, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so funny, because I said I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm gonna do this to hold myself accountable. I'm doing this for you guys and for me, all right? Maybe mode. All right, I just said I've been working with Aaron, right? I've been working for him for a while now, and I've watched myself transform because I got out of maybe mode. Yeah, I, I, I saw my health and my mental health, and I realized how much it was connected. And I said, I can't live that my life like that no more. I can't live my life in maybe mode. Like, maybe I'll work out. Maybe I won't. Anybody want to? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe. Like, and a lot of us, this is what we do. I'm going to come down your lane real fast. I might be getting ahead of myself, but stick with me. A lot of us, y'all, y'all told yourself y'all got out of maybe mode when you signed up for uh, the gym. <laughs> and you thought that meant that I'm out of maybe mode because I signed up. But then you signed up and you still are not going. And you're, st- and you're not going consistently. And so you're kind of in maybe mode, right? So I decided I didn't want to operate in maybe mode. So I'm about to give myself, I'm about to clap for myself, and I'm about to throw myself under the bus at the, all at the same time. And you're going to hold me accountable. And I know you are, which is why I'm scared to say this, which is why I'm taking so long to get the point out, because 
I know what's about to happen too. <laughs> I know what's about to happen. All right. So I decided I was going to stop operating in maybe mode. I started working out with Aaron. And now, like your girl, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I don't play about my gym time. I don't play about my gym time. Like Alicia will tell you, I'm like, no, I can't go. I have the gym. I mean, I be mad at like pastors like, hey, we have a meeting. Da, da, da. I'm like, <sighs> like, I be mad. I be mad when it's during my gym time because I be trying to protect my time. And so for, for as much as possible, I'm like, I, can't, I, I know I can't always be like, I can't come. But whenever I can, I'm like, hey, I can't make that. Or can we move it to this time because that's my gym time and I made it my sacred time. Right? And so I decided to stop operating in maybe mode. And when you start to stop operating in maybe mode, my whole body, like my whole health, not only say my body, my health is just different. Like I am more healthy, like uh, physically and mentally because of the dedication I have to showing up and working out. Y'all better clap for me. I don't know what y'all doing. <laughs> okay. Now, there's two folds, there's two parts to this. Because I'm trying to help y'all. Listen, I want us to be a healthy church. Right? I want us to be healthy. I want us to be healthy. Not only can you work out, you also got to watch what you want. Oh. <laughs> you got to watch what you eat in. And I've been trying. Like, y'all know my struggle. Well, I don't, I'm taking too long on this point, but I'm trying to free somebody. I've been doing okay. To be honest, I've been in maybe mode. Like, maybe I'm going to eat these cookies. Maybe I'm going I'm to prep my, my smoothies on Sunday, and I'm going to have these green smoothies. I've been doing it. I've been making green smoothies. I even bought some beets. I made some beet juice, Shelly. I said, okay. Beet, I tried some beet juice with some carrots. It was beet, carrot, and orange, I think it was. It was really good. Yeah, like, yes for me, but no for me because it's maybe mode. I've been in maybe mode, like maybe I'm going to do that or maybe I'm going to just run over here and get a pizza because I don't feel like making a food. Right? <laughs> and everything in moderation, yes. But I'm not talking about moderation. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just maybe mode. <clears throat> so, I'm saying today, as I was writing this, I'm like, okay. So I want to start operating. I don't want to operate in maybe mode on one side and not over here. Yeah? So now I'm like, all right, I've conquered one. So now I need to get out of maybe mode when it comes to this eating situation. All right, so I'm telling y'all right now, I'm, I'm getting out of maybe mode. All right? I bought some chocolate chip cookies yesterday. I ate them, and I'm done. I'm done. I ate them. Alicia, there's like five left in the car. I told myself I'm giving them to you and the boys after. Please take them. I'm getting out of maybe mode, and I'm going to operate. Anybody with me? Oh, y'all not about it. Anybody with me? Like, this is not what the sermon is completely about, but listen, for real, when it comes to your health, when it comes to your fitness, we got to stop operating in maybe mode. But what I really want to make sure you get is that maybe mode is a setup for maybe transformation. And so as you're trying to transform your life, you got to decide and actually make a decision to say, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to wrinkle out, I'm going to iron out the wrinkles from my mindset. You got to make a decision. Yes? Are we making a decision? Are we deciding? So that means you got to take, you got to decide, okay, I'm going to iron out these wrinkles. I'm ironing out these wrinkles. You got to iron out these wrinkles. All right, so that's the first thing. You got to make a decision. So you abandon the wrinkles. Like, I can't, I, I'm abandoning the wrinkles right now because this was killing me to walk around like this because I hate wrinkled clothes. So I'm abandoning the wrinkles. All right, so now you got to decide. The second thing that you might want to do is you want to ask for help. I don't know, I can't remember, like, who, like, taught me how to iron. I think a lot of people, I don't know. I don't know how that worked. I'm not sure when I, uh, when I, uh, started to learn to iron or whatnot. But anyways, when you're ironing, it's not like you just automatically know. Sometimes you might need a little help and you might want to ask for help because, I mean, right now, if I was to go ahead and start to try and iron here, am I good? Somebody say, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm good. We, we ironing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, 
look, look, a lot of times you got to ask for help because sometimes we are trying to do stuff where we don't know the steps, we don't know the answers, we don't know what's next, we don't know what we're doing. And a lot of times when we're trying to transform, when we're trying to change our lives, when we're trying to make these swift, these transitions, and when we want to get better and we want to become, uh, do great things and do great things, we don't know what we're doing and we have to be okay asking for help. But a lot of us don't want to ask for help because a lot of times we want to lean to our own understandings and we are too prideful and we feel like we got all the answers. Because ultimately, I mean, it's ironing. It should be easy. I should be able to just plug it in. I shouldn't have to ask for help, Tisha. Like, I should be able to just figure it out. Like, who reads the instructions? I don't read the instructions on boxes. I don't know if y'all do. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to try to put it together and I'm going to see because I feel like I can do it. And a lot of us, that's killing us because we feel like we don't want to ask for help and we will not. And the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you the path to take. And the thing about it is that's a lot of people, if you ask them, what's my favorite scripture? A lot of people are going to say, this is my favorite scripture. We've all, like, we hear this scripture and we say this is my favorite scripture but then we don't like live in it we don't operate in it like we don't actually trust God we lean to our own understanding all the time like majority of the time we're leaning to our own understanding we're leaning to what we think is right we're leaning to how we feel like things are going to work. We're leaning to kind of like, okay, this is what uh, is, is going to work out, and this is how this is going to happen. And a lot of times we're just not, we're, we're unwilling to ask for help. We're unwilling to take the advice of others. But I heard y'all say, I need to plug it up. <laughs> Somebody, I heard y'all say that you need to plug it up. And so what I, <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all slow down. <laughs> Yep. So I, somebody said, I am a professional ironer, okay? <laughs> uh, is that you and that back there telling me what to do? <laughs> uh, and so I don't, I don't want to skip past this point real fast, though, but I want to make sure that we are not leaning to our own understanding when it comes to actually renewing our mind. Because a lot of it feels like it's simple. It feels like we know what we ought to do. And so we will lean to what we typically will do. And before we know it, we are not trusting God, we're trusting ourselves. And I don't know how many of you have had the experience to where you're trusting yourself and it didn't go well. Where you're trusting yourself and then you're wondering, ugh, how did I do this? Ugh, how did I get here? Right? All right, so you've got to ask for help. The, the third thing that I'm saying that you do is you got to add structure. You got to add structure. Our structure today is the ironing board. But let me come down your lane real fast, because I know that we are kindred spirits in this room. <laughs> and I know somebody else done said, I'm good, I don't need an iron board. I can use the side of the bed. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, okay, I've got, some of y'all, <laughs> some of you have been using ironing boards all your life, but some of us have used the side of the bed no, it's really, I thought it would be more. No? Yeah, okay, y'all, okay, I see the nods. Y'all just not really trying to be with it, with it. Y'all just like nodding a little bit. You're nodding small, like slow. We use the side of the bed. And, I, and this happened, it's so funny, because it just, literally just happened to me. I was at my aunt's house, and she said, oh, I have the iron board. I said, oh, it's all right. I'll just use the side of the bed. She said, no. She came in with the game of the iron board, game of the iron. <laughs> He's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> you use the side of the bed, because a lot of times, we will use what's right there. We will use what's easy. We will use what's convenient. We will use wherever we are. Because we're really not only talking about ironing. I know I'm using an ironing board as your structure, but when you look at your life and you look at the, the transformation that you want your life to have and where you're trying to take your life, a lot of us have absolutely no structure. Like, we are literally just doing whatever happens. Like, we are taking the day as it comes. We have no plans. We have nothing set up. It's kind of just like, if this happens, I go this way. If the wind blow that way, I'm going to go. If the wind blow this way, I'm going to go. And I want to tell you uh, right now that you, you got to go ahead and get off the bed. Like, a lot of times we're allowing that whole, like, okay, I'm just going to do it because it's right here. I don't need anything more. And, and some of us also need to get, get go ahead and get off the bed because you're just too busy stuck in the bed. Um, and a lot of us will wallow in whatever we've got going on, and we will sit right there in that bed. We want transformation. We're praying for transformation. We're saying we want to renew our mind. We're saying we want to do these things. However, we right in the bed praying about it. 
And so now it's time to go ahead and get off the bed. Like you've got to come out of you got to come out of it. you got to make the decision and decide, listen, all right, I get it. I'm going to get off of the bed. So we got our ironing board. <laughs> we plugged it in. And sometimes you have to uh, adjust. So I should turn on. <laughs> yes, you got to turn it on. And you turn it on by adjusting the settings. <laughs> Hold on, was that you? <laughs> no, she's not. You got to adjust the settings. Yeah, adjust the settings. Do y'all adjust the settings on your iron? If, I, if I'm honest, I don't, well, <laughs> you've got to adjust the settings. Now, when you adjust the settings, that's trying to figure out, okay, where exactly does it need to be, how hot it needs to be, like what's going on, right? You're adjusting the settings, trying to figure out what that looks like, trying to figure out where it needs to be. And um, the reality is sometimes in life we're not adjusting the settings. We're not paying attention to the settings at all. Um, we're not um, realizing where we are and what we need. And I need to tell somebody right now, I think this is the one somebody came for, like you're frustrated where you are, but you're not stopping to see what you need. Like, it's not working where you are, but you've got to take note of your season. Like, where are you in, in life? Like, what do you need right now? Like, what setting do you need right now? Where do you and God need to be? Like, where, what, what's going on right now? And you're trying to do this transformation thing. You're trying to transform, and God has you in a certain space, in a certain, uh, a certain level, and you're, you've got to adjust to where he has you. You got to adjust to the season of your life. And a lot of us will get so busy complaining about the season of life that we're in that we don't realize if we would just adjust the season, if we would just adjust the temperature, if we would just make a little changes, then we'll be able to, to really take off if we understand where we are. Make sense? And so if we don't understand where we are and we just keep ironing at the, the same level, if you at, you at level one and you iron your shirt look like mine, you might not get, you might not get nowhere. And so a lot of us, literally, you're getting frustrated. There are some frustrated people in this room right now. You're so frustrated that you can't even really stop to really hear and understand and, and, and pay attention or really receive what I'm saying because you've just been frustrated with God because you feel like you've been stuck at the same place. You're frustrated with God because you feel like I'm doing X, Y, Z, and it's not working. God is like, listen, I'm, I need you to change the settings where we are. Like, I'm trying to shift things. I'm trying to take you here. But you're you're still stuck in the same place and you won't allow me to adjust. You got to adjust the settings and you got to take note of the season where you are. And so you got to adjust and decide, okay, this is where I'm at and this is what this is about to look like. Some of us are walking around in our wrinkles and we're struggling because the next thing you got to do you got to activate the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're so silly. Uh, you got to activate the Holy Spirit. Listen, uh, Annette said, you need some steam. <laughs> y'all are so silly. I hope y'all catching it. I'm gonna say, I, I, hope, I know I'm illustrating it. But I hope you're allowing it to, 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 to you receive it. So uh, you got to activate the Holy Spirit. Okay, so for this intense purposes, yes. Annette said it first. You need some steam. You got to throw some water in the iron and, and, and make sure because it will make it a little bit hot and some steam. But how many people know that some people are scared of the steam? And I don't know. That might not be you. It might not be your story. But a lot of people don't like steam. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in a steam room. Um, but I, I love a steam room, but the first time I went in the steam room, I went in the steam room, and I was just like, ooh, this is too much. <laughs> it's just too much. It's like, I can do a sauna, but, like, the steam room, Shelly, I just was like, I can't be, I can't do this. I can only do so. I can't do this. And so what I started to do when I would go in the steam room, I would put a towel, this is good, I, even, I would put a towel over my face. Uh -huh. 
And I would put a towel over my face. I would go in, I would go in the steam room, and it allowed me to kind of stay longer. I kind of needed something. I had to allow myself to get used to the steam room because I just it was just too much for me, and I couldn't. I, could, I was struggling. And, and now when I go into the steam room, I love a steam room. Uh, and now when I go into the steam room, I don't need anything on my face. Now when I go into the steam room, I'm running to the steam room. Now if I go to the steam room and it's broken, I'm mad. I'm in my feelings, mad, because I'm up trying to get in the steam room, and I can't do it. So a lot of people are scared of the steam come down to what we're actually really talking about. A lot of people are scared of the Holy Spirit. And because we're scared of the Holy Spirit, we will sit and we will iron and we will try to do this transformation and never allow, never, we will never actually activate the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit is just waiting for you to be like, let's go. He's there. Like the water's there, he's there, and he's like, I'm waiting for you to like let's let give me permission, like let's do this together. But we're so scared of the Holy Spirit for so many reasons. I, a lot of them we're just, just scared, and so we stay away, and we feel like maybe we I, when it comes to steam, a lot of us I don't know if it's like we feel like I don't know what we feel like when it comes to steam. Uh, like some people are scared of like you know the steam that comes up, maybe you're gonna burn, like what it's gonna be. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I think because we don't exactly understand. And so we'll just stay away. And a lot of us are scared of the Holy Spirit because we've actually, this is really good. Make sure you catch this one. Because we've actually experienced the Holy Spirit. And when we experienced it, it was just like, ooh, I don't want that again. Because when the Holy Spirit starts to call you out and tell you the truth. I, was, I wish Michelle Libby was here. She posted something on Facebook uh, this week, something like that. She was talking about how uh, she came out the store. I think she had, had something. The pastor was just talking about that. Like, you had something, and the Holy Spirit's telling you, like, go back inside and, like, take it out. I think she, like, took it out the store by accident. Like, she didn't purchase it. Like, she stole it, okay? Like, <laughs> let me tell the full story. She walked out without it, and then she said she got to her car, realized that it's there, and it's just like, oh, man. Anybody ever had that experience before? And it's just like, oh, man, it's like, I don't really want to go. I wasn't trying to steal it, Lord. And then she said that the, the Holy Spirit was telling her, you know, go back in, go back in, go back in, go back in. And a lot of times, you get that experience one time, it's like, we don't really want that. Because you don't really want somebody telling you what to do. You don't really want anybody holding you accountable. You don't really want anybody, like, trying to walk this journey with you. Because a lot of times, if we don't have somebody walking the journey with us, then we can walk the journey by ourselves, and then we can turn around and be like, I didn't know. Yeah. When all the while, you, you knew, <laughs> but you tried to, to say, no, I'm going to put the Holy Spirit over there in this box. I don't really want you to walk with me, because then I can just turn around and say, okay, I'm going to repent. I'm just good, and I'm, I'm just going to leave you over there. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing, and then maybe we'll meet up later. Yeah? So we got to abandon the wrinkles. Hold up. Sorry. <laughs> we got to abandon the wrinkles. <clears throat> and that's really decide, okay, I'm actually going to do this. I am actually want to transform. I actually want to, to renew my mindset. And then we've got to say, okay, I'm going to ask for help. Okay, you've got to add the, the structure. You've got to adjust the settings. You've got to activate the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. I already kind of did this one because uh, we don't want to be afraid of the steam. Uh -huh. And then uh, you've got to appreciate your value. You got to appreciate your value. Let's see. I'm not getting very far with iron in this shirt. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Just realize it's still, it's still quite wrinkled, right? Uh, quite wrinkled. It's quite wrinkled. You got to appreciate your value. Somebody say appreciate your value. Somebody say appreciate your value. Appreciate your value. A lot of us are in the same place that we were in, I'll just say a month ago, or a year ago, or five sermons ago. <laughs> because we don't appreciate our value. We don't appreciate what we have to actually offer. We don't appreciate who we are. We don't appreciate all that God's put inside of us. We don't appreciate the gifts that we have to give. And we feel like it is okay for us to walk around just as wrinkled as could be. We feel like it's okay 
for us to walk around with this wrinkled mindset. We feel like it's okay for us to walk around with a mindset that's not of God. We feel like it's okay to not grow. We feel like it's okay to not do great things. We feel like it's okay to not do grace things. We feel like it's okay to sit in uh, a complacency. We feel like it's okay to just sit where we are and just be okay with being less than because we feel like we don't have the value. And we look across the way and we give that value to somebody else. We look across the way and we give the value to sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so or cousin so-and-so, not realizing that we have to appreciate our value. I'm making this as practical and as simple as I can uh, in the most simplest sense. Um, we've got to realize that you are inside out worthy. When you're ironing something, I'll, I don't even really, this is the funny thing, I don't remember who taught me. I guess I need to go back to asking for help because I don't remember. But when you're ironing something, when something's special or when something has a certain material or when something got something that's valuable like on the outside, you do something a little bit different, you turn it, you turn it inside out. And then you're like, wait, I got to I got to do a little little something with this. I got to make this in, I got to turn this inside out to make sure that I don't mess it up, to make sure that I don't ruin <laughs> I don't ruin what uh what what what's uh, what's what's what this is the value that it has i don't know if anybody's ever like are y'all with me yeah. like i don't i don't know i don't know if um like there's a certain value that you gotta have when it comes to like your 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 stuff right like i would imagine like there might be something that you're gonna let the kids something like okay her iron this baby but like there might be certain things in your closet. Like, Hold on, I got to do this a little bit different. <laughs> don't somebody say don't touch it. <laughs> somebody say, don't don't touch it, right? And there are certain things that you got to turn inside out. And I just had to get a little bit closer to you to realize and to help you realize that when it comes to your transformation, when it comes to renewing your mind, when it comes to what God is trying to do in you, he's like, listen, I'm trying to do that from the inside out. Like, you're trying to do this transformation, and God is like, I'm trying to do it from the inside out because you're that valuable that it's got to be from the inside out. I can't do this from the outside out. In. He's like, I got to do this from the inside out. Like, I, I, you're just that special that you got to, it's not about just what's seen yeah. on the outside when you come with transformation and when you come with uh, uh, trying to, time, trying to uh, uh, transform yourself. It can't just be what it looks like on the outside, which is why I love, Aaron, I love you so much. Oh, my gosh. I love you so much because what I'm able to say that I've done and, and with working out and with my mindset and with all the things, like, I'll, you, we'll get so mad. We will work out for a little bit and, and, and we don't lose a little weight. Then we in our feelings. Oh, yeah, it's just me. Y'all trying now, y'all fronting on that one. I know y'all know that, that that's the thing. And it's just like, no, we always want the outward transformation. And so I, I love the journey that I've come on because while I've lost weight, it's so funny because a, a majority of what has happened with me has just been from the inside out. And so it's like I feel it. So even though you might not see some all the time, it's like I know what's going on on the inside. Ah, and somebody is so concerned about what's going on the outside that you're missing that God is doing something on the inside. And so I just need you to know that God is like, listen, I want to transform you, but I want to transform you from the inside out because you're inside out worthy. I want you to understand. He's like, I want you to transform you from the inside out. You're inside out worthy. Give me one second. Let's finish. So, <laughs> you know me and Willie, we preach together. I, I'm adding him in here. So, it's, all right, I think about that inside out. Anyways, God wants you to know that you are inside out worthy. Let's go through our, our things. There's one more here. There's seven things. So, you've got to abandon the wrinkles, right? That's what you've got to decide that you want to transform. Are y'all with me? Yeah. 
Like, I know, I know it's simple. I know some of y'all, I know. Just, 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 just receive it. <laughs> receive it. Listen, you've got to abandon the wrinkles. That means you've got to decide, I want to be different. I want to be transformed. I want to renew my mind. I don't want to conform to the world, right? I'm going to abandon the wrinkles. I am going to ask for help. I might not always know. you got to plug in the iron. <laughs> You right? You might not know. You might not know what you gotta ask for help. You gotta add some structure to your life. You gotta adjust the settings. You gotta activate the Holy Spirit. You gotta appreciate your value. And as you can see, uh, I've been trying to iron this shirt. <laughs> I've been somebody said for a long time. I've been trying to iron this shirt. Y'all ain't seen no steam come out. Somebody said, girl, what you doing? Annette is, is holding herself back from coming up here to help me. Because she said, girl, she don't know how to iron. She need to ask for some more help. But I don't know if anybody's ever... Ooh! Was that you, Mr. Johnson? Who said that? Who said that? Oh, <laughs> Elder Bozeman. <laughs> What'd you say? Wait, what is it? Cheap religion? Ah, cheap religion. He says it's a cheap religion. All right. You got ahead of me, ahead of me. <laughs> Sometimes, or actually, I have a question. Has anybody ever tried to iron something and you tried to iron it with an iron that just sucks? You ever been at a hotel and the iron just don't work? The iron is just not good. The iron is cheap. Yep, no? <laughs> Anybody ever been uh, in the iron? You know how you get in the, uh, you know how you get in the, um, in the iron? <laughs> uh -huh. You ever been, you ever been in the, uh, in the iron, uh, in the in the aisles, and you sometimes you can some things that you can you can go a little cheap on, you know some things you can go generic, some things you can uh, go cheap on, and then some things, right? <laughs> some things you can go cheap on, other things maybe not so much. Stick with me, because I know I'm ironing, <laughs> but I'm talking about your life. Sometimes you have to alter the power. Sometimes you've got to alter the power. Sometimes we've got all the right steps. You've asked for help. You've abandoned the wrinkles. Let me come down your lane. You've abandoned the wrinkles. Like, you've decided this before. You've said, listen, I want to transform my mind. Like, I want to do what God wants me to do. Like, I want to decide. And so you have abandoned the wrinkles. You've made the decision. You took off the wrinkled clothes. And you said, I don't want to be that person anymore. Yes? All right, we've abandoned. And then sometimes we've asked for help. Some of you have signed up for Bible studies. You've maybe been baptized, and you said, listen, I want to ask for help. I don't know what I'm doing. You've asked somebody to help you. You've tried to talk with somebody. You've tried to make sure uh, that, you, that you set yourself up to win, set yourself up to be, uh, 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 be, to be ready, right? And you asked for help. You abandoned the wrinkles. You asked for help. The next thing, you've added structure. Some of you have added structure to your life. You've done the things. You've made sure and said, listen, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to do this on this day and this on that day. I'm going to make my smoothies. Like I said, I'm going to prep this. And you've done some of this stuff where you've added uh, the structure. Some of you have adjusted the settings and you've seen, okay, this is where I'm at in life right now. And I, I'm in this season, so this is what I think I need. And I'm in this season, so this is what I think I need. And you begin to adjust the settings. And, and some of us have activated the Holy Spirit. You're walking with him. Like he's talking to you. He's telling you what to do. He's setting it up. You're not scared to hear what he has to say. And some of us have appreciated our value. We realize that there are gifts and that there are talents inside of us. 
We realize that there are things that God wants us to do, and we are appreciating the value that we give and the value that we have. But a lot of us have been trying to do all those things <laughs> but we've been doing it with the wrong power. You've been doing it with the wrong power. And it's real frustrating if we stick with our illustration, if you ever ironed a shirt with the wrong power, with something that didn't work. It's something about it, it gets real frustrating. And so I feel like many of us are at a place in our lives where we've been doing all the things but for some reason is not working and it's not working because you've been trying to transform yourselves like the world transforms. You've been trying to do this thing the wrong way. You've been trying to transform yourself as if you were from the world. You're trying to transform yourself the way you think it should be done based off what the world has shown you. But you were not birthed from the world. <laughs> you were made in the image of God. Meaning your transformation requires a different level of power than the world is showing you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it hits different. <laughs> we'll sit right here. It hits real different. When you start doing stuff, God's way. It hits real different when you start doing stuff God's way with God. And you stop trying to do the things of God without God. It hits real different when you decide to say, I'm not going to be cheap <laughs> with what you got going on. Because many of us, we just be cheap in life. <laughs> and we'll be on the iron aisle and we'll go, uh, I think I can get away with this $10 iron. Uh, I need it. And then we will struggle. Oh, hear me. This is real good. You will struggle because the irons will be lasting. They don't be breaking. You will struggle for the next five, seven years trying to iron them clothes when we could have just got the more expensive iron in the first place. And it would save you years. It would save you years. Ah, it would save you years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> And years of time. If you weren't trying to have this cheap religion, <laughs> if you weren't trying to, 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 to do the things of God without God. Like if you weren't, the, the text says, like, he's like, listen, you're not of the world. Your transformation that you need in your life, it's not, it, you can't learn that from the world. You can't do it like they are doing it. Why? Because you're made in the image of God. That means you got, you're on a whole different wavelength. It's funny, the, the, the cheap iron versus the expensive iron, I did a little research. The cheap iron versus the expensive iron, it's got different wattage levels. It's got different power levels. A lot of us, We're trying to fight these things that are coming at us. We're trying to fight the devil. We're trying to transform. We're trying to conform. We're trying to do all these things at this low, this low, <laughs> at this low voltage. 
Like you're trying, to, you're trying to do it, but you're not using what's strong enough to handle it. You, stick with me, because I'm going to try to say this right. You have too much power inside of you to operate at that low level. Because I said it a little backwards. I want to make sure you got it. You have too much power inside of yourself to operate at this low level. So you're plugging yourself into stuff, trying to do the things of the world, and you want to know what's happening? You are short-circuiting the iron. Like, you are short-circuiting the stuff. Like, you have too much power inside of you that you need something greater. You need a power that's greater. And God's like, listen, I'm right here. And so when we think about transformation, and, and, and when I look at this text, we, we talk about not conforming to the world. And we, we think about that and we think, okay, well, I can't be like the world, right? So when we look at it and we interpret it, well, it's like I'm not supposed to, like, you know, go and be out, you know, in these streets, right? And what we say, I'm not supposed to conform to the world. This is a little bit deeper than that. Like, no, we can't conform to the world, but also the level that God is trying to transform us to is just a whole other thing. Like, it's a whole, like, it's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole another voltage situation, power grid, if you're with me. So somebody today, you've been trying to transform, but you've been trying to do it based off the way you think it should be done, based off what the world has shown you. And you've been following it, and it's kind of working, but you're frustrated because, like, it's working, but it ain't working like you want it to work. That person, I want you to, to, come, to come meet me right here. This not, this, I'm, not, this, I'm not too concerned. This is for somebody. The person that's been trying, you've been trying to do the, you've been trying to conform, you've been trying to transform, you've been trying to do all the things, and like it's working, but it's not working at the level that you really needed to work. It's working, but it's, you're, you're struggling because like I'm trying to conform to what God wants me to do and who he wants me to be, but I feel like I'm, I'm struggling, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ironing with this weak iron. If that's you, I want you to come right here. We're going to have a prayer. I'm standing here first because I've been looking at my life. And that's what I started with. I've been looking at my life, and I'm like, I'm doing all the things. But there's a level of power that's missing. There's a level of steam <laughs> that's missing. There's a, another level of the Holy Spirit that I want to allow into my life. So I may be the only one, <laughs> which I'm fine with. But right now, I'm saying to you guys, and I'm giving you the opportunity. And I don't, and I'm not, I don't even want to say I, I might be the only one. I don't, I don't want to say that to try to guilt trick somebody into moving. But from a real, 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 real sense, when I looked at the word that was for today, and I looked at where God has me, me and him had a real conversation to where I said, God, I see that there's a transformation that you're doing in my life. There's a transformation that you want to do with me. And I want to do that with you. Like, I want to do it with God, and I want to do it His way, and I don't want to box God out of a God thing. I'm going to invite you all to stand. I'll be 
just want to we want to give our mindsets back to you God and we realize that the transformation that you want to do in our lives is not like the transformation that you want to do with just anybody but God, you made us special. God, you made us valuable. And God, there's an inside out work that you're doing within each person who's here. And so God, my prayer right now is that we'll take notice of the inside out work you're doing. God, that we'll celebrate the things that you're doing on the inside. God, that we'll realize how valuable we are. God, that we won't try to do things just the world's way, God, but we'll realize that we're so special. God, that we need not the expense of iron, but God, we need you. God, you paid an expensive price for us. You paid an expensive price with your blood to be able to cover us to be able to make sure that we have the opportunity of transformation. God, my prayer right now is for those who have come down who are saying, Lord, I'm ready to turn up the steam a little bit. God, the people that are saying, Lord, I've, I've been on this journey with you, but God, I don't want to do it without you. God, we don't want to do God things without God. God, we don't want to try to fix ourselves. God, we don't want to just try and transform ourselves. God, it's not just a list of seven steps and seven things we do and different things like that. God, we realize that in order to transform, God, that you're going to be the one that has to transform us. And God, we cannot conform to the world because we are not of the world. So what works for the world is not going to work for us because we were made in your image. God, we're so special that those things don't, are not going to work. God, we need something more, and the more that we need, God, ultimately is you. And so, God, we ask that your power would just be with each person today as we are deciding that we want to make this decision for you. God, I'm praying for somebody that didn't even come down. They might be here, they might be at their seat, but ultimately they need to make a decision to say, God, this time I'm walking with you and I'm not turning back anymore. God, somebody may need to be baptized. Somebody may need to join a Bible study. If that's you, I'm invite you to raise your hand right now. If you're saying, I want to go deeper, I need to go deeper. I need something more. Somebody may want to join this church. If that's you, I invite you to raise your hand. If you're saying, listen, I want something more. God, we just say thank you. As I finish this prayer, God, I just say thank you for your love. Oh, man. 
God, I just say thank you for loving us so much. Ah, oh, that God, even when we do it wrong, God, even when we try and we fail, God, even when we try and we mess up, God, you're still right there. God, you still care. God, you're still there to hold us. God, somebody missed everything that was said today, but they just need to know that you still love them. God. Ooh, I'm done, guys, but God, somebody here needs to remember and needs to know. God still loves you. No matter what it looks like, no matter what weapons are being formed, God still loves you. And he don't love you like your mama loves you. He don't love you like your daddy loves you. He don't love you like your friend. He loves you so much more. So if you came here feeling like you didn't have anybody to love you, know that you're leaving here knowing that you have the greatest love of all. God, we just say thank you for being a loving God. In your name we do pray. Amen.